Welcome to edisati.com, your partner in education. In this lecture, we'll discuss the concept of parallelism. Parallelism is the use of components in a sentence that are grammatically the same or similar in the construction, sound, meaning, or meter. The parallel structure may be in the form of tenses, in the form of verbs, or in the parts of speech. We are in the habit of using a sentence that is grammatically inconsistent. That is not intentional. We usually structurize our sentence in an inconsistent manner. That is, we do not pay any attention to words. Is the use of parts of speech correct or as per what the rule says? Parallelism and the understanding of parallelism helps us to form these sentences which are grammatically coherent. Before we move further and discuss the concept of parallelism, we'll start our discussion about clauses and sentence. A clause contains a subject and a verb, but can or cannot contain a complete thought. In simple words, I'll say that if there's just one subject and one verb, the resultant structure becomes a clause. And secondly, it may or mean, may not convey some significant meaning. For example, in these two clauses. Now the first clause says, Alex studies at ABC Montessori. Now here the subject is Alex and studies becomes the verb. Now this clause has one subject and one verb and it signifies something that there's some person who's known as Alex and he studies in the school known as ABC Montessori. In the second clause we have he is a good student. Now the subject is he and is becomes the verb. Thus, it is a complete senseful clause. But the problem is that if I just say he is a good student, it does not signify anything. Now, this he can have multiple dimensions. Now, this could be used for some person who's Alex. It could be used for another person who's Bob. It does not signify any meaning. It does not have any complete thought. Thus, a clause may have a complete thought or it might not have a complete thought whereas a sentence has a subject it has a verb and it also gives a complete thought for example if I join the above two clauses to form a sentence I'll say Alex studies at ABC Montessori and he's a good student now obviously I have my subject as Alex and studies becomes the verb and in the second clause I have he as the subject now when I say this as a combined sentence here he obviously points to Alex now this he would mean that I'm talking about Alex thus this sentence gives me a complete picture about who studies in ABC Montessori and who is a good student thus a sentence signifies a complete thought whereas any clause might not give a complete thought. Likewise we have another sentence Vibha is a trained dancer and has been performing at various stage shows. Now who has been performing? Now if I read this sentence I obviously understand that this, this is Vibha about whom we are talking that she has been performing at various stage shows. Now we discuss the concepts of conjunctions. A word used to connect the clauses to form a sentence are known as conjunctions. Now for the understanding of conjunctions, I'll go back to the previous slide. Here in the sentence, Alex studies at ABC Montessori and he is a good student. The word and is used to join two clauses which are 
the first clause as a Alex studies at ABC Montessori and the second clause is he is a good student and to make a sentence using these two clauses I use the word and such words that are used to join two clauses are known as conjunctions thus if I uh, use the same sentence that is Vibha is a trained dancer and has been performing at various stage shows the conjunction here is and. Thus the work of a conjunction is to join two clauses so as to make a sentence and it may be in any form for example there is a clause like it is raining and I will go by car. And if I need to join these two clauses, I write the sentence as since it is raining, I will go by car. Now here, the conjunction since joins the two given clauses and the resultant structure is a sentence. Now we move back to the discussion of parallelism and we say that the concept of parallelism basically focuses on a very basic thought. It says that a sentence may have any number of clauses but the structure of each clause must remain the same. That is, when you break a sentence to form the constituent clauses, each clause must have the similar structure. And to study parallelism, the methodology is really simple. First, you break the sentences. Then check whether the structure of each clause is similar or is it different. If it is different, we'll make the structure same and then rejoin the clauses using these same conjunctions and the resultant sentence now that we get would be grammatically coherent. Now for example, I have this sentence, the Germans are known to design great cars and for putting best of interiors in them. Now this sentence, if somebody speaks to you the sentence, you'll obviously think that it is correct because it signifies something, it conveys a meaningful thought, thus it is a complete sentence in itself. But there is a certain problem. To, to basically understand what is the problem, I'll need to remove the conjunction and then study the resultant clauses. Now, the conjunction in this sentence is AND. And since AND is the conjunction, so the resultant clauses would be the Germans are known to design the best cars and the Germans are known for putting best of interiors in them. So the clauses are the Germans are known to design great cars and the Germans are known for putting best of interiors in them. Now if I closely observe these two clauses, I understand one thing that the first clause follows the infinitive structure. Now the main clause, now the main verb is are and to design, here design is an infinitive. Whereas in the second clause the main verb is are and for putting, putting becomes a gerund. Now the first clause is follows an infinitive structure whereas the second clause follows gerund and parallelism says that a sentence may have any number of clauses but all of them must follow a single homogeneous structure thus to correct the sentence I need to rewrite the second clause and make putting or change putting putting's structure into the infinitive one. So first class has infinitive while the second has gerund. To correct it, I'll write putting as to put. Now, if I write putting as to put, 
it also becomes an infinitive and then the second clause becomes the Germans are known to put best of interiors in them and now to make the sentence I rewrite the sentence by putting the same uh, conjunction that is and and the resultant sentence would be The correct sentence is the Germans are known to design great cars and to put best of interiors in them. I have changed put into to put and now the structure of the sentence is coherent. Let's have another example. I think Raman knew that Matthew is autistic as they have been friends since childhood. Now here it would be a little tricky to estimate which are the clauses that make this complete sentence. I'll break the sentence into some number of clauses as Raman I think as one clause, Raman knew as the other, Matthew is autistic as the third one, they have been friends as the fourth one. So this sentence basically has four different clauses. Now if I closely observed each of the clause, the first clause is in present tense, second new becomes past, third again is in the present tense and fourth again is in the present tense. The four clauses out of which three are in present tense and one is in the past tense. To correct the sentence, I'll change the structure of the second clause and write it in the present tense. So if I write new and change it, if I change new to knows and write Raman knows, this also changes to the present tense. So all clauses are in present tense but the second clause and I change all to the same structure. The clauses now are I think which is in the present tense, Raman knows in present tense, is autistic present tense, have been friends present tense. And now I join the clauses to make the sentence. The correct sentence would be I think Raman knows that Matthew is autistic as they have been friends since childhood. Now as here we see even the structure includes the concept of tenses as well. In the first example we discussed how the form of the verb is determines the structure of the sentence. Here we see that how the tense used also determines the structure of the sentence. Let's take another example. Carol is a good model. She is enchanting and exhibits grace. Now, such a question is always tricky because we start thinking that it is a complete sentence and we have to uh, estimate in accordance to this thought. But if I look and observe this question carefully, there is a full stop between the sentence. This means this is one complete sentence and this is the other complete sentence. So I have to check whether there is an error in the first sentence or the second sentence. The first sentence is a single clause it cannot have an error of parallelism the second sentence does have an error of parallelism now the clauses of the second sentence are she is enchanting and she exhibits grace now if i closely observe the clauses enchanting is an adjective for she and exhibits grace grace is a noun now the first one clause has an adjective and the second clause has a noun. So to correct the sentence, I'll change the structure of the second clause so as it becomes an adjective. And I write the sentence, uh, the clause as she exhibits as she, I, I'll change this thing and I'll write is graceful. Now again graceful is an adjective for her thus enchanting is adjective, graceful is adjective. Both the clauses are now in the same structure. Now I join these two sentences by putting the 
the conjunction again and I get Carol is a good model. She is enchanting and graceful. Now this structure is correct. Another form of the question based on the parallelism is by the use of correlative conjunctions. Now, Correlative conjunction is a coordinating conjunction that pairs up with other words to connect the elements in a sentence. They have, they help indicate the relationship between elements that connect in the sentence. Now, uh, for example, there's one clause as I will eat pizza or a pizza and the other is I will eat some pasta and I want to show a relationship using the coordinating conjunction wherein I want to convey that I'll have either of these things like either I'll have some pizza or I'll have some pasta I'll use a code correlating conjunction as either and or and I'll write I will eat either a pizza or some pasta. Now here the conjunction is either and or. Such conjunctions that occur in pair and help us to estimate the relationship between two given clauses, they are known as correlative conjunctions. Now in this sentence, in the fall, Philip will either start classes at community college or his, as his mother wishes or join the Navy as his father hopes. Now, there's a relation that either he'll do one thing or he'll go for the other one. So I'll use the correlating conjunction as either or pair and either and or are the conjunctions and the resultant uh, sentence is the one that is written here. Now if I have to find which are the two clauses in this sentence, I'll do a very simple, I'll use the very simple method. For both the clauses, the part of the sentence that is written before either is common. So in the fall, Philip will is common for both the clauses. Now the first clause becomes in the fall, Philip will start classes at community college as his mother wishes and the second clause would become in the fall philip will join the navy as his father hopes now these are the two clauses and we can now check the parallel structure now this is a list of the correlative conjunctions which of uh, which are used in uh, the general sentences uh, for example we already know about either or Likewise, we have neither nor uh, scarcely when. So, for example, there's a sentence like scarcely uh, had I reached the station when the train left. Now, this shows uh, the relationship that as and when I reached the station, that mo that very moment the, sta the train left. So, scarcely had I reached the station when the train left. Likewise, we have uh, not only Dennis apply an additional uh, pair of polish on his tooth, but also he polished or applied a little more extra scent on his clothes. Now here we are showing the relationship that he did both the things. So we use the correlative conjunction as not only and but also. So this list of correlative conjunctions would help you to estimate where these correlative conjunctions are used in the sentences. Now for example, I either want the cheesecake or the frozen hot chocolate. Now, to break the sentence and form the clauses, I'll simply write the thing that is written before either becomes common to both the clauses. So, there's only I written before either. So, I is common to both the clauses. Now, the first clause, the part of the sentence that is written between either and or becomes the first clause. So, this is the first clause and the part of the sentence written after or becomes the second clause. This becomes the first clause, this becomes the second clause and I is common to both the clauses. I is common, the first clause becomes I want the cheesecake and the second I the frozen hot chocolate. 
Now, if I consider these two clauses, the first clause is correct. It has one subject, one verb. And the second clause, I, the frozen hot chocolate. It has a subject, but it does not have a verb. And since there is no verb, the sentence is, or the clause is, incomplete. The second clause does not have a verb. To correct the sentence, if I, there are two ways in which I can correct the sentence. One is that I introduce a verb here. I write the clause as I want and then the frozen hot chocolate. Or another way would be that I move this want before either bit because then I and want would both would be common to both the clauses. Right. So, so if I move want before either, then the resultant sentence would be I want either the cheesecake or the frozen hot chocolate. And in the other way, if I write want before the frozen hot chocolate, the resultant sentence would be I either want the cheesecake or want the frozen hot chocolate. Both these sentences are correct because now if I break the clauses, both the clauses would be homogeneous in structure. Another example, I'm not only going to the concert but also backstage. Now if I have to break the sentence first, I'll have to guess where are the clauses, uh, where are the conjunctions. So the correlating conjunction is not only and but also. And the thing that is written before not only is common to both the clauses. So the two clauses are I am going to the concert, I am backstage, right? So I am going to the concert is correct, whereas I am backstage does not make any sense because, because it is missing the verb. So to correct this sentence, I'll simply move going to before not only and that would mean that I am going to would be common to both the clauses. And the resultant sentence would be I'm going not only to the concert but also to backstage. Right. Or the other way would be writing going to with backstage as well. So if I insert going to here, even that would be a correct sentence. 